what he joined together, no one should. No one should put us under. Conservative activist Bob Vanderplotz led the campaign that removed three Iowa Supreme Court justices. Now he's firing up the base for next year's presidential caucuses and reminding voters of their judicial victory. They gave us the retention vote for the people to hold a court in check if they saw necessary. The retention vote wasn't just to be a that a boy, you're doing a good job, just keep going. The vote has sparked nationwide debate over when voters should take judges off the bench and the balance between judicial independence and accountability to voters. But one area of total agreement, it was a historic vote. Only once before in California have voters removed multiple Supreme Court justices. Iowa's decision also marked a turning point in campaign finance. From 2000 to 2009, just 2.2 million was spent nationwide on retention elections. In 2010 alone, that number grew to 4.6 million, including close to 1 million in Iowa. Judges are supposed to be accountable to the law and the Constitution, not to special interest groups, not to political forces. When Iowans took three of their justices off the bench, it caught the attention of conservative activists around the country. Now many are wondering if they might begin to harness this newfound power to take other justices off the bench. I think there's a lot of concern among observers that there will be more and more politics, more and more money pouring into states that have tried to insulate their uh, selection of judges from politics and money by using retention elections. Iowa's Chief Justice Mark Cady fears that judges may have to hit the campaign trail just to keep their job. The more long-term worry and concern is that if retention elections are going to be transformed into um, political campaigns. Katie says voters politicize the judiciary if they punish judges for a single ruling, like the one to legalize gay marriage. But conservatives say the judges were out of bounds, legislating from the bench. I would say they politicize the courts. We just operate with the vehicle that we had available to us. New Republican House Speaker Craig Paulson says the retention vote reflected overall dissatisfaction with government. In Iowa, voters not only rejected three justices, they said goodbye to their governor and turned the House over to the GOP. All three branches of government, the electorate addressed in this last election cycle. And you know what? We're still functioning. We're moving forward. The state's going to end up stronger. Um, and th I mean, that's the way the system was designed, and, it, and it's working. In next year's general election, Iowans will decide whether to retain another justice involved in the ruling. In the meantime, there is pressure for a marriage amendment bill, which would give voters the final say. And with evangelical conservatives expected to dominate the caucuses, many presidential candidates may be forced to weigh in on the debate as well. They're definitely interested in this. It's the perhaps overriding issue for them. In 1996, U.S. Chief Justice William Rehnquist described judicial independence as one of the crown jewels of our system of government. What's at stake in Iowa, and perhaps other states, is how and when our judges become accountable to the people they serve. Reporting in Des Moines, Heather Sells, CBN News.